it's all set? Okay. Mm -hmm. Hi, welcome to TLC. I'm Wendy Bombard. I'm a BSN RN. And I want to tell you a little bit about how I came to TLC. Um, about a year and a half ago, I was recruited by Tim Fortune, who is our vice president. And I was um, brought into TLC with the understanding I would work approximately four hours. Um, and TLC had a lot of really exciting opportunities for me, and they had lots of things in mind that I didn't even know about. And here I am sitting here uh, working between 15 and 40 hours a week. Um, TLC is an extremely warm and friendly environment, and so I couldn't resist those opportunities. So a few things that I do um, here at TLC is I work for three independent living facilities. I am the clinic nurse there, and I um, also case manage those three buildings. Um, I love that hands-on care that I'm able to give to, to clients. I also teach orientation every single week to all the new employees that come into TLC on Wednesdays. And I also um, run two Alzheimer's support groups. I run one on the first Wednesday of every single month from 6.30 to 8 and pizza is included. Um, and I also run another support group on the third Tuesday of every month from 11 to 12.30 at Pillsbury Manor in Allenwood on, um, in South Burlington. At Pils um, and I am lucky enough to have lunch served for that one. Um, the reason that I tell you a little bit about what I do is because uh, people out in the community that are suffering um, from dementia and Alzheimer's disease, um, their family members are looking for help and these two support groups would offer free um, assistance. So I'm very passionate about those two groups. And I also every other month teach PCA classes, patient care attendant classes. Um, I co-teach them with Alan Susi, who is the director of nursing here. And we do that um, Tuesday through Friday um, from 8 to 5. And um, there is a one hour lunch as well. And on, at the end of Friday, not only are you um, a PCA, but you're also a TLC employee. So I do that as well. And hopefully upcoming, I will be teaching Powerful Tools for Caregiving, which is a national course designed to care for the caregiver. And that's a six-week short course um, that is free to the public. And it's co-taught. Um, there's two teachers involved, and we have a script. It is a scripted course, and that is uh, also offered um, and to the community. And it is an hour and a half per week, um, depending on what time frame we're going to pick. I'm not sure, but those are the things that I currently am doing. I'm also a case manager in Chittenden County, so um, as well as the three buildings I case manage, I also have a few people that are in Chittenden County that I um, oversee the caregivers in. So that's a little bit about me, and now it's time to focus on you, um, because that is why we're here. So I'm going to start by um, saying welcome. And um, we're going to go through a PowerPoint here. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about is our first client, who is a <clears throat> who was Mohammed's first client. Um, this lady here actually um, helped Mohammed come up with this company, um, and we're going to listen to what she has to say. TV and he said, 
I need a name for my company. And I said, TLC. And he said, OK. That's good. He said, thank you, wonderful care for me, for me. And I can remember, if anybody needs tender loving care, call my home at TLC. It was winter, and sometimes uh, maybe I didn't like the breakfast at here. And uh, Muhammad would go out, it was very cold, and he would go to McDonald's to get me breakfast. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's great. What else? Mm -hmm. What about our caregivers? When, uh, how do you like our caregivers? Oh, okay. The caregivers are, are all very nice, kind, they're very good. And above all, Adi is the scheduler. He's, he's everybody's friend. Uh, I, uh, I treated all, all the caregivers like my daughters, and I showed them what to do. And they always did it. He has been helpful in every way. When I came back, from the nursing home, uh, Muhammad at TLC had, had a bed ready for me, and uh, it was like a hospital bed. And he started a routine with a bed and with everything else, and we're still doing the same routine to this day. I believe it's been five years since uh, Muhammad's been supervising and helping me. If, if you need that, like I, maybe I said, if you need tender loving care, call Muhammad at TLC. He's up, Muhammad and I created a foundation for TLC. Mm -hmm. We are the co the co founders. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, so as you heard, um, she is a co-founder of TLC. So a little bit about our core team here at TLC. The president and CEO, CEO is Mohammed, um, and Mohammed um, found this company in 2006 after he realized going out into the field that there was not enough staff in the facilities out there. Um, he is a nurse, and he determined that um, there needed to be more assistance and more help. So he built this company with the idea of staffing agencies as well as helping out in home care. Um, he was 21 when he built this company and now he's 31. Um, so this company has uh, been around for 10 years. Um, underneath uh, that is the vice president. That's Tim Fortune. I did mention to you Tim um, as he was who recruited me. Um, his job is to get out there in the community and determine the needs that are out there and try and meet them with TLC services. So he is a very big part of our community and he's very well known. Um, he's in, he is uh, a part of all kinds of groups in the community. Um, he's, an he's very involved with Alzheimer's Association um, and he's also um, out there recruiting as well. All the way to the left here is the business manager. That's Abby. Um, Abby was mentioned in the video as being a scheduler. He's no longer a scheduler. Um, he's, he's my right-hand man IT guy. Um, but he's also very much involved with you. Um, he's involved with the contracts that are being put in um, for all of you and your housing contracts. And um, so he's, he's very much involved with that. Next to him is the CFO, that's the Chief Financial Officer, and that is um, Tim's wife, who is Vanessa Fortune. She is a lovely lady here, um, and she is in charge of all the paychecks and all of the time cards. Um, I urge you to get to know her. Um, and on a side, your time cards need to be in at 9 o'clock every single Monday morning. And they can be put in all different ways. They can be put in by email. They can be dropped off at the office. They can be faxed. They can be mailed. Um, we have a box outside of the office that you can drop it into if you need to. 
um, but primarily electronically is how people usually get them to us and they are done you can take a picture of it and send it however you want to do it but just know that that is an expectation to have uh, time cards in at 9 o'clock on Monday morning. Next to the CFO is our Regional Vice President and Community Liaison in New Hampshire and that's Bob. Um, Bob is over in uh, New Hampshire. He does a lot of um, intake for us. So if there's somebody who would like to join TLC um, as a client, uh, we refer them to Bob and um, Bob does a lot of the interviewing process with those families. Um, he also is very involved with the community in New Hampshire. To the right of that is our Director of Nursing, that's Alan Susi. Alan has been here a little bit over three years um, and he basically oversees all everybody outside of the core team um, and also some of the core team. He oversees our PCAs, our LNAs, our LPNs, our RNs. Um, he also, as I said before, he does co-teach with me um, and he oversees the three sections of case managers. We have um, case managers in the New Hampshire area are um, Kathy and Bob Widger. Uh, we have case managers in Chittenden County are myself and Jean Jordan. And we have case managers in Central Vermont who are Rose and Nancy. And the six of us will be in charge of home care. Um, you will be overseen by the Director of Nursing, Alan Susi. Over to the right here is the Scheduling Supervisor, and that's Courtney. And Courtney will be overseeing the Home Care Scheduler, who's Robin, and our Staffing Scheduler, who is Lena. And you will be working with uh, Lena. To the right is the Human Resources Manager in Recruiting, that is Pam. And Pam oversees our Recruiting and HR Coordinator, Cara, and our Reception and Administrative Assistant is Brenda. And here are our pictures. Um, all the way to the left here is Mohammed. He's the founder of TLC. He's also a registered nurse, as I said before. There's Tim Fortune, Robert Ellis, or Bob, and Abby. Alan Susi, I've spoken a lot about. He's responsible for overseeing all the case managers as well as all the caregivers, LNAs, LPNs, and RNs. Vanessa Fortune, who is our financial officer. Courtney O'Brien, who oversees both home care and also staffing. And HR, um, HR's manager, who is Pam. This is an example of one of our case managers, Rose, who works out of, Barry, uh, out of our Barry office. She covers all of Vermont and New Hampshire. And she, we also just hired Nancy Racine, who is uh, another case manager. We have uh, Lena, who is our staffing coordinator, and she will be working with you. And we have Robin um, Ashley, who is our home care coordinator. So why TLC? What makes us special? Well, we were voted best of the best business in 2014 and 2015. We were also have maintained a A plus rating with Better Business Bureau for over five years, and we're very proud of that. But what's most exciting is our 2016 Best of Home Care based on families rating, which is awarded by SeniorAdvisor.com. These are all wonderful achievements for us, and we are excited to be able to share them with you. We have three offices. Um, we have a Barry office on 192 South Main Street, which you are able to have appointments in. We have our West Lebanon office, 93 South Main Street, and that's also by appointment only. And then we have our main office in South Burlington at 1550 Williston Road, and our hours are 8 to 6. We're hoping um, our next office will be in Rutland. So TLC Home Care and TLC Nursing is a nurse-owned and operated agency specializing in non-medical home care and health care staffing. So founded in 2006, as I said before, our company is focused on providing compassionate care to homebound seniors, affording, affording them the best quality of life, and delivering flexible staffing solutions to the health care industry in the New England area. So our promise to our client, which is a promise made by you, 
is to treat each client with respect and dignity, to treat each client as if we're caring for a member of our own family, to respect each client's privacy, to thrive for excellence on our work, and continuously adapt to improve the quality of care delivered. We are all about team leadership here, and appreciation for individual needs, and social responsibilities, and these are all pillars in our communities where care needs are, assist, are constant. So TLC Home Care and Nursing are there to support you, and that's what's very important in this. This is a video that was done by Tim Fortune that depicts exactly what we do for families out in the community. These are just some of the um, multitude amounts of uh, things that TLC can offer to people so that they can go to work and feel comfortable knowing that their loved one is in great hands. Ruth lives independently in her home and is very happy there. Her children all work and some have moved away. They all love her very much and want to respect her wish to continue living in her home. Ruth's family worries about her daily, concerned if she is taking her medications, eating good meals, and has someone to share the day with. They are looking for a little TLC for their mom. TLC Home Care is the answer her family has been looking for. TLC provides companionship, homemaking, personal care, medication reminders, transportation, and much more. TLC is accredited by the Better Business Bureau and is a member of the Home Care Association of America. TLC Home Care provides Ruth's family the confidence they need that she has a caring and compassionate caregiver who ensures that all of Ruth's activities of daily living are being met safely. Included in Ruth's care is 24-hour access to TLC's licensed nurse, who creates her plan of care with her family and shares it with her physician. This gives everyone involved peace of mind that Ruth is getting the best possible care in her home. Because there's no place like home for care. Okay, so hopefully that gave you an idea of what we do out in the community for uh, families. So, as I said before, we were founded in 2006, and TLC Nursing employs the most qualified healthcare professionals in the industry. Our healthcare staffing services are available for per diem, contract, and travel assignments, ranging from one shift to 13 plus week assignments and they're designed to meet every organization's short-term short staffing needs. As I said before, I'm working in three independent living facilities. Um, so there's a lot of places that we are touching in the community. We are touching hospitals, nursing homes, clinics, doctor's offices, subacute facilities, long-term care facilities. We provide health care uh, professionals who have a minimum of at least two years of relative experience in their field. And our staff is made up of different kinds of people, RNs, LPNs, LNAs, and certainly administrators. This is a very important slide because this slide says, be proud because you are valued. You are valued here at TLC. And I need you to understand that we are here to make sure that you are feeling appreciated and supported. Um, this is a big piece that separates us from other home care agencies. We do everything in our power here at TLC to make sure that you know how important you are and how valued you are. And if you're not feeling valued, then you need to speak to somebody about that because we don't want to lose you. So please know that you are valued and we're very, very happy that you've joined us. This slide shows that how to get on to look at your employee handbook. My guess is that you haven't taken a look at it yet, but if you go to www.tlcnursing.com and you click on the employee resources, you can just scroll down that menu until the, you get to the employee handbook. It's very important that you look at this before you start work. Um, Mohammed and I sat down together and we cut some of the orientation. Uh, because it was very long and there was information in there that you just did not want to hear again, which is things like 
workplace abuse and sexual harassment, which you've heard in other places. So we did cut it, but we did put it into the employee handbook and it's imperative that you do read it. Another very big piece <clears throat> that TLC offers that is completely different than most home care agencies is our open door policy. We really do have an open door policy here and you do have access to upper management. With a click of a mouse or a phone call, Mohammed is always available. We would like you to follow the chain of command, of course, and so the first person you would be speaking to would be Alan. But know that we we here at TLC all have our doors wide open and we welcome your, your feedback, your suggestions, even your criticism. We would like to be as best as we can be here and so along with feeling valued, know that you always have somebody that will support you. So we need to talk about confidentiality and HIPAA. There's a really big difference between these two words. HIPAA is a law, and that means if it's a law, that civil and criminal penalties can apply if HIPAA is violated. Confidentiality means that all records and files pertaining to business operations, including patients, employees, operations, and procedures, are confidential. And they do remain the property of TLC nursing at all times. All employees must adhere to established privacy policies and procedures. Any employee who violates this policy is subject to discipline up to and including termination of employment. And I need to make this clear. We have no tolerance for a breach of confidentiality or HIPAA. HIPAA is a law and it protects patients' private health information. It was designed to maintain the privacy of protected health information including computer and written documents. Home care staff must keep absolutely confidential any and all information about our clients, such as addresses, problems, health issues, financial statuses, and relationships, etc. We are not allowed to discuss individual clients with or in the presence of anyone that does not have direct contact. Now, of course, scheduling um, or your case manager, Alan Susi, would be people that you could talk to. But if you are working in a facility and you are not working with the same client that another TLC employee is working with, you may not discuss that client. However, if you're working in a facility and you're working with the same client, you certainly are able to discuss that client. Because we consider confidentiality our most important policy, we insist that our staff respect this policy both in spirit and in fact. Divulging information about our clients is not only considered a gross violation of our company policy and will lead to corrective action up to including termination, it is also, as I said before, a violation of the HIPAA law and it may result in criminal and civil penalties. So the receipt of the employee handbook, which we just talked about with regards to getting on the website and taking a look at it, that um, is the way that we are going to assume that you have signed a confidentiality agreement as a condition of employment with TLC Nursing. <laughs> Mandated reporting. TLC recognizes the client's right to privacy and independence. However, if you see any kind of abuse or you suspect any kind of abuse, physical, financial, psychological, or emotional um, or you see neglect, abandonment, or exploitation, those things need to be reported immediately to APS. You do not need to call us for any kind of permission. I'm giving you the permission now. So you should know that you are a mandated reporter. That means if you see any abuse or suspect any kind of abuse going on, neglect, exploitation, or abandonment, those things must be reported to the APS, Adult Protective Services phone number. And they will ask you some questions. You will, f you will answer the questions so that if a report can be generated. And ultimately, then we would like you to call TLC um, and let uh, Alan Susi know what you reported. 
So any employee of this agency who has reasonable cause must report suspicion of abuse. No person required to report elder abuse will bear any criminal liability unless you know the report is false. When two or more people are required to report a case, they may reach an agreement to have only one of them make the report. No supervisor or administrator may impede or prohibit reporting. The identities of those filing reports are confidential. The employee reports suspicion orally in writing to the nursing supervisor, and that would be Alan. The report will include the name and address of client, name and address of person or facility responsible for the care of the client, the nature and extent of the client's condition, and any other relevant information. And then Alan will then complete an abuse and neglect evaluation. So what do you think our drug and alcohol policy is? You got it. We have no tolerance for it. It's not acceptable. So on this slide, as you can see, there are five red circles with slashes through them. I can hardly read the text. But know that employees may not be under the influence or use any alcohol, intoxicant, or narcotic on the way to work or while performing duties for TLC nursing. Also know that TLC nursing may conduct searches for illegal drugs or alcohol with, with in company facilities or work sites as well as personal property within the workplace without prior notice to employees. And personal property may include purses, boxes, briefcases, as well as any TLC nursing associate property that's provided for employees' personal use such as desks, lockers, and files. Such searches may be conducted at any time and employees are required to cooperate fully with those searches. Smoking. I don't know how many of you out there are smokers, but you should know that in keeping with this agency's leadership role in the healthcare community and the growing body of evidence that indicates smoking and exposure to secondhand smoke is hazardous to smokers and non-smokers, we at TLC strongly urge our employees not to smoke. That being said, there are smokers out there. So let's talk about what the, our policy is here. Smoke, <clears throat> smoking is not permitted in or around TLC premises, including the parking lot. Smoking or using any other tobacco products is not permitted in any client's home. Smoking is limited to regular breaks and to an area at least 30 feet from the client's home. While performing duties, staffing an institution, the facility protocol will apply. Should you have any questions or complaints or disputes about smoking in the workplace, please contact your supervisor. And I want to mention here also that when you're working in a facility, you will have an orientation to that facility and there should be a smoking policy as part of that orientation. OSHA. All employees are required to maintain safe work practices and observe all OSHA safety requirements and regulations. TLC Nursing is committed to maintaining a safe and healthy environment for all employees. We don't want to lose you. So we need you to report all accidents, injuries, potential safety hazards, safety suggestions, and health and safety related issues immediately to your supervisor. All employees should refer to the client's plan of care for appropriate techniques for lifting and transfers. In order to avoid injury, we require that caregivers not lift, push, or pull more than 50 pounds. If you're doing that, you really should be speaking to your supervisor. Assure appropriate orientation to use of medical equipment, supplies, oxygen, drugs, and to the location of the MSDS, which are the material safety data sheets in the facility. It is the employee's responsibility, that's your responsibility, to obtain all appropriate safety information from the facility. If you or another employee is injured, we need you to contact your supervisor immediately. Seek help from outside emergency response agencies as is necessary. All workplace injuries must be reported, regardless of whether medical attention is necessary. The appropriate forms can be obtained from your supervisor. TLC Nursing follows all safety incidents and reviews through our Quality Assurance Program. But I want to reiterate here, it's very important that you're timely with any injury. You must let us know as soon as possible. Regardless of whether you go to a doctor or the hospital, we need to know if you're injured because two months down the road, if you end up with an infection and you come to us and say, oh yeah, that was for two months ago, 
we're not going to be able to help you. So we really need you to understand that if you're injured, we need to know right away. So for the facility staffing emergency procedures, you must familiarize yourself to the policies and procedures of each facility that you go to. That includes fire drills and any disaster preparedness, as well as we said before, the smoking policy, the cell phone policy, um, fire policy, uh, all of those things should be covered in your orientation. Speaking of fire, in case of emergency, call 911. Um, for our healthcare fire safety, what you should know is that the acronym RACE, R for rescue anyone in immediate danger, A for alarm, activate the nearest fire alarm and call your fire response telephone number, C contain that fire by closing all those doors in the fire area, E, extinguish small fires. If, um, there, there will be extinguishers in the different facilities, and you should know where they are. How to properly operate a fire extinguisher is the acronym PASS. P, P for pull, A for aim, S for squeeze, and S for sweep. There will be a fire policy in your orientation for your facility. Infection control. Assume that all blood and body fluids from all patients are potentially infectious. That means if you get the mindset that your client has Hep B or HIV, bloodborne, those things are frightening. And you certainly, if you have the mindset that those clients might have those diseases, you will be well protected. Remember, gloves should be worn anything with anything that is warm and wet or warm or wet. Um, those th items are blood, feces, vomit, urine, oral secretions, respiratory secretions, and secretions from open wounds. So make sure that your gloves are worn when coming in contact with any body fluids or blood. Hands must be washed before and after contact with each patient and before preparing food. When you arrive to your facility, you should be washing your hands. Hands should be washed under a steady stream of warm water with soap or antibacterial fluid for at least one minute. And then you must dry your hands completely with a disposable paper towel. When gloves are removed, hands should be thoroughly washed again. Gloves do not take the place of hand washing. Remove those gloves by grasping the top and peeling them off, folding the fingers into the glove and turning the glove inside out. Now you're able to discard your gloves. Never reuse gloves. Bed linens, towels, and clothing soiled with urine, stool, or any other body fluid should be placed in a plastic bag and tied shut until ready to be laundered. And then those things need to be washed in hot soapy water and dried on high heat. This slide shows exactly how to take off gloves. When gloves are removed, hands should be thoroughly washed again. Remember, gloves do not take the place of hand washing. If you're working with a commode or a bedpan, we ask that you rinse with a 1 to 10 bleach solution. That's mixing a quarter cup bleach and two and a quarter cups water and using a fresh solution daily. Usually in facilities, they have a spray that you can be using to clean them properly. Remember to dispose of gloves and incontinent padding in a sealed plastic bag and then to place that bag inside a household trash bag. Wash all eating utensils in hot soapy water. If you're working with needles and you have or are working with glucometers, um, make sure you do not push, put your needles in the trash. That is not acceptable. They are to be put into a puncture resistant container. For most of you, you'll be working in facilities, therefore, you'll be using the sharp containers that are located in your facility. Um, but other places you can put needles are places like a coffee can with a hard plastic lid, a laundry detergent uh, container, an ocean spray, juice container, anything that's hard plastic and that the needle cannot penetrate. Remember, bandages, used cotton and gauze, and gloves with body fluids on them are biohazardous waste. By law, if fluid cannot be squeezed out of the cotton or gauze, the waste item can be disposed in regular trash. T 
TB. The reason that we test for TB here at TLC is because it is treatable, but it does spread easily. So we're going to talk about what TB is. So TB is spread when a person with TB disease coughs, sings, or speaks, and it is breathed into your lungs. The germs reach your lungs, and then it can reach other parts of your body. Your body will try and fight those germs. If your body controls the germs, then you have something called a latent TB infection. And that just means that you have a positive skin test, but you have a totally normal chest x-ray. You also don't feel sick, and you don't have any TB symptoms. And you can't give TB to others. So, you can take medication to treat your latent TB infection and prevent getting TB disease. If you do get TB disease, it will attack your lungs and other parts of your body. You will have a t positive TB test. You'll also have a positive chest x-ray. You'll feel sick. You'll have a cough, fever, weight loss, chest pain, and you may be sweating at night. You also will have active TB germs in your body and you can give TB to others. And so that is why we make sure that you are tested before you join TLC. Taking your TB medication is very important. You will need to take the medication to help you get better and to prevent any spread of germs. Know that fewer than 200,000 US cases per year are happening with TB. It is treatable by a medical professional. It spreads easily. It requires a medical diagnosis. Lab tests or imaging is always required. As I said before, chest x-ray is the way that we determine um, a second check on whether you have uh, TB. Our cell phone policy. Our cell phone policy is this. Um, if you are working in a facility, there will should be a cell phone policy. But our home care policy states that you are to have your cell phone with you. And the cell phone should be on a buzz or a vibrate. And the way it works is this. You are to give your our phone number, our TLC phone number of 735-1123 to all of your loved ones, your care providers, your family members, your boyfriends, your girlfriends, whoever it is, should have our 735-1123 phone number. And if there's an emergency, they should be calling us. At that point, we will take that information and find you and call you directly. The way it will work is, is that when your phone vibrates and it says TLC urgent, call now, you have permission to certainly call. However, we do not want cell phones used while working. We don't want any texting being done. We don't want any games being played. So that's why we allow the phones to be with you. It is because our policy states that if for some reason your phone vibrates or buzzes and TLC says urgent, you have certainly the right to call and find out why. Another thing I wanted to mention here is that there are times where you may use your phone for music. If a client doesn't have any ability to listen to a particular song they're talking about with you or something like that, I'm okay with you taking your phone out and, and loading up a song so they can hear it. But that is the only exception. The dress code. So you're representing us. So it's really important that you are dressed appropriately. We don't allow blue jeans. We don't allow sweats or shorts. And we don't allow mini skirts. No skirts, no shirts or blouses tied at the midriff. Clothing with bare midriff or clothing not properly fastened are to be worn. I want to mention here though that working in facilities, usually scrubs are what is, um, is normal. And as long as that's part of your orientation process, we are totally fine with you wearing scrubs. 
No crop tops, no tank tops, no camisoles, no wife beaters, no low cut or tight fitting shirts or tops that show undergarments or inappropriate amount of skin are allowed. Blouses or shirts must provide appropriate coverage. No open toed shoes, sandals or flip flops are allowed. And athletic shoes or crocs are allowed. Mud shoes are allowed. Clogs are allowed. But you must have your toes covered. That is an OSHA requirement. And it's for your own safety. Your hair must be neat, clean, and tied away from your face. No excessive jewelry, dangling earrings, bracelets, or necklaces. And that's simply because of what's over here on the right here, where you see that somebody's earring was pulled right through their ear. No body piercings other than the ears are to be worn. You like that slide? Tattoos must be covered. Tattoos are very frightening to the generation that we work with. So they must be covered by long sleeves, other adequate clothing coverage, or with tattoo makeup. I've also heard that there are actual sleeves um, that you can buy in all different colors that you can put over, uh, over your tattoos. Um, and perfume shouldn't be worn with working with clients either because of the fact that people do have allergies. Fingernails must be kept short. Artificial nails are not allowed because of that bacteria that can accumulate underneath the nail. And our number one piece of our dress code is our name badge. And our name badge must be worn at all times. So I want to talk about our name badge for a minute. Our name badge um, has two pages. The first page is um, our name, our licensure, and what we do for TLC. On the back, if you um, most likely will not have any information because you're working in the facilities. The second page will have emergency protocol, our phone numbers, um, and what to do in emergency situations and how to reach the schedulers. But in emergency situations, you will be following the facilities protocol. This badge needs to be worn at all times while you're working for TLC in the facility. Our non-solicitation agreement simply states this. You may not work directly or indirectly through another agency with the facility that TLC placed you for a period of one year from the date of your last shift in that facility. In other words, if a facility says to you, oh, I'd like to double your salary if you'll just quit TLC, you're not allowed to do that. You will need to have left that facility and waited a full year before you can return for that offer. So let's talk about licensed nursing assistant and certified nursing assistant job description. So a licensed nurses, nursing assistant is a professional member of the healthcare team whose primary responsibility is providing supportive nursing care under the supervision of a licensed nurse in accordance with the Nurse Practice Act regulations of the State Board of Nursing. This position reports to the licensed nurse. In an institutional setting, this position reports to the designated person. The qualifications are you must possess valid current license under the State Board of Nursing. You must be of mature and responsible character. You must possess general knowledge of the disease process and basic standards of personal care. You must possess knowledge of necessary actions in emergency situations. You must be able to effectively communicate with the client, their significant others, and the nursing supervisor. And you must be in good physical and mental health. Also, you must complete this agency's employment process. The duties that you will be doing are, but not limited to, providing direct personal nursing care of subacute, chronically ill, and convalescent clients. Provide basic personal care according plan of care, monitoring client's condition, notifying the supervisor of changes in the client's condition, documenting activities of daily living accurately and submitting timely vital signs and weights, working in cooperation with facility administration and personnel, and participating in continuing education programs. Performance is 
deemed competent when you demonstrate ability to provide nursing care within the parameters of the State Nurse Practice Act and the policies and procedures of the agency you're working in. Also, demonstrating ability to implementing a client's care plan. Demonstrating ability to accurately monitor a client's condition. And demonstrating effective communication skills. Also, it's important that you demonstrate ability to document pertinent information and submit records in accordance with this supplemental agency policy effectively. So, the LPN job description, licensed practical nurse. A licensed practical nurse or licensed vocational nurse is a professional member of the healthcare team whose primary responsibility is providing direct nursing care under the supervision of a physician and registered nurse in accordance with the Nurse Practice Act regulations of the State Board of Nursing. This position reports to the Director of Nursing. In an institutional setting, this position reports to the designated person. The qualifications for an LPN is you must possess valid current license under the State Board of Nursing, you must be a mature and responsible character. You must possess general knowledge of disease process and medication action. You must possess knowledge of necessary actions in emergency situations. You must be able to effectively communicate with the client, their significant others, and the nursing supervisor. You must be in good physical and mental health, and you must complete this agency's employment process. The duties that you will be doing um, include, but are not limited to, providing direct nursing care of subacute, chronically ill, and convalescent clients, administering medications and therapeutic treatments according to a prescribed regimen, monitoring clients' condition including effectiveness of treatments and medications, notifying supervisor of changes in clients' condition, teaching the client appropriate self-care techniques, documenting accurately and submitting timely the nursing notes according to agency standards, and working in cooperation with facility administration and personnel. And last but not least, making sure that you participate in continuing educational programs. Your performance is deemed competent when you demonstrate ability to provide nursing care within the parameters of the State Nurse, Act, State Nurse Practice Act and the policies and procedures of this agency, demonstrating ability to implement a client's care plan, when you demonstrate ability to accurately monitor a client's condition, and when you demonstrate effective communication skills. Also, when you demonstrate ability to document pertinent information and sub submit records to the agency in a timely manner. The RN job description. A registered nurse is a, personal, is a professional member of the healthcare team who provides skilled nursing care to clients under an established physician plan of treatment in compliance with the Nurse Practice Act and adheres to the policies and procedures of this agency. This position reports to the nursing supervisor. In an institutional setting, this person reports to the designated person. Your, qualifi your qualifications must uh, one, possess a valid current nursing license under the State Board of Nursing. You must have a minimum of one year experience in an acute care setting. You must possess and maintain current cardiopulmonary resuscitation certification. You must be a mature and responsible character. You must possess current knowledge of the disease process, emergency interventions, and healthcare measures pertinent to each individual client. You must possess good observational nursing judgment and effective communication skills. You must be of good physical and mental health, and you must complete this agency employment process. Your duties include, but are not limited to, providing specialized nursing care, observing and providing ongoing assessment of client and family circumstances, communicating client changes and needs to the physician and nursing supervisor, initiation of preventative, rehabilitative, and therapeutic measures, teaching safety precautions, medication actions, and interactions, and appropriate health care measures, administration of medications, treatments, and other modalities as ordered by the attending physician, 
maintaining current skills, knowledge, and information by continued education programs, documenting accurately and submitting timely the nursing notes according to agency standards, and working in cooperation with facility administration and personnel. And in performance, performance is deemed competent when the registered nurse demonstrates ability to provide nursing care within the parameters of the State Nurse Practice Act and the policies and procedures of this agency, when they demonstrate ability to initiate and implement a realistic care plan, when the registered nurse demonstrates ability to continually assess a, a client's changing physical, emotional, and social condition, when the registered nurse demonstrates effective communication skills, and when they demonstrate ability to document pertinent information and submit it according to the agency policies. So our policies for travel staff, that's you. TLC Nursing Associates require candidates to furnish and keep current at all times during an assignment certain medical, employment, and certification information, including but not limited to employment application, resume, references, negative drug screens, background screening, TB test, current CPR, and any advanced certifications required within a specialty or unit being worked, professional licensure, Hep B series medical record or declination, any client specific training, and any TLC required documentation. Expired documentation must be renewed prior to expiration date or candidate risks the possibility of not being able to return to work until the docu documentation is up to date. Candidate agrees to work the minimum number of contracted hours during each week of this assignment as set forth in the assignment specifications. You acknowledge and agree that any and all compensation, benefits, housing costs, bonuses, re disburse disbursements, reimbursements, or other portions of candidates' compensation are contingent upon completion of your contracted hours for this assignment. You agree to make up any hours missed each week and may be required to float in order to do so. All bonuses and reimbursements will be prorated accordingly if the minimum number of hours is not